are freaking at the Freaker's Ball, y'all, on this Halloween edition of the Freaker's Ball program, show, whatever you want to call it, right here, the Freaker's Ball. <laughs> it's live, it's Friday night, it is 10, uh, October 26, 2018, uh, and this is our Halloween show, because, uh, Next Friday is, is next month, and Halloween is next Wednesday, so this is as close as we're going to get. So, happy Halloween, you all. Uh, anyway, <laughs> what is that? It sounds, it sounds like the exorcist. <laughs> oh, it's not the exorcist, it's just Mosey. Hello, hello. Hello. How's it going? Oh, it's going good. It's going good. Yeah, I, I don't know if you, because, well, did you, 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 I probably called you the other day, but the chime on my end here, it's when you call it, sounds like the Exorcist song. Oh, really? Well, not It's sounds like a nice chime. little chime on my end. Not, not really, but kind of. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, it's the Exorcist coming to get us on this Halloween show. <laughs> yeah, you never know. You don't. You know, so uh, anyway, folks. Yeah, we're using uh, wire right now. Um, yep. For in instead of the old Skypo, so uh, we're we're wired. We're wired. Dang right. And anyway, so uh, uh, howdy, and welcome to all the folks out there in the various places you may be listening, tuned in from Real Howdy Liberty, Real Liberty dot org, Freedoms Network dot com. Uh, you can't tune in on Minds, but if you got the message on Minds, we're here. So uh, come on over yep. and, and say hi and howdy and all that stuff. If you're on the audio stream, which uh, some of you are, uh, welcome to you all as well. That audio, audio stream goes everywhere. And now, from in the future, from this episode going forward, I don't think they go back and do old episodes, but I think from this episode going forward... We will be also on iHeartRadio. Uh, That's so insane. It's well, not not really insane. We're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're just that good. No, uh, 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 we it, must be. No, it, 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 through through Spreaker, um, they they have things to to let you get on the different platforms, and um, I I had actually uh, submitted uh, uh, Freaker's Ball about a year and a half ago or something like that. And, okay. And and they, and never nothing. They never came back with nothing. But oh. uh, I, had, I had also submitted Hal before that, prior to that, and mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, they took his show, and so now they took. I resubmitted this again. Hey there, Juan Taco. I see Juan Taco listening in from another. All right, Juan Taco. From, from the dark areas. Right yeah. on. Anyway, so uh, yeah, we'll be on iHeartRadio, and of course we're on YouTube, and we're on. Wow. Uh, bit shoot and we're on uh, Spreaker and uh, but those are all later. Those, those all come post show. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, so howdy and welcome to all the freaks here in the uh, 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 Real Liberty Media chat on IRC. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I almost know where I am. We got we got the barman ghoul and the cowboy tech spirit and. <laughs> you, you and me and, and the Kate monster and uh, <laughs> Asmo droid, Chalcedony zombie. <laughs> I don't know all these names. <laughs> I'm I'm not changing my name. And and the and the circle freak. And oh, you're changing the names. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm just coming up with names here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, and, and the Chloe Creighton, I, I don't know what you would call her, uh, Cyborg Noodle, I think that's a bot. Don the... whatever. Anyway, all these people, <laughs> Echelon and Goober and Grams and Don again and Meister Brow and a couple of Foxifieds and Pone Sauce and Rain and the Fluke bot and Roams. Didn't I say Roams earlier? I guess not. Uh, Roams and Skittle and Phantom and Colfax and Frumpy and Java Doctor and JJ's and Kozu. And Moe and the Sock Puppet. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. I know, I know. <laughs> Scary. Oh, man. 
I don't know what iHeart does to the to the the, the broadcast. I, I've never listened. I I got Hal on there, but I never went back. I never listened to him on iHeart. But uh, mm -hmm. um, if you if if you are hearing this later on down the road, uh, as the podcast on iHeart. Welcome to the Freakers Ball. Uh, yes, welcome. Glad to have you out there listening, tuned in to us, and come on over on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Uh, 11 p.m. Eastern, and. Uh, to uh, reallibertymedia.com and check out the uh, Freakers Ball show page there. And hey, you can watch live, li listen live, get it on into the chat here, and, and talk to all the great folks that we have here. And all those names I just mentioned, yeah, they're here in this chat room. And and there's others out there listening in other places. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> so how the hell are you doing? I'm hanging in there. That's good. It's good to hang in yeah. there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, yep. Um, my son made me a new mailbox post this week, so that was cool. Yeah, was just the, 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 his dad. Pour, poured the cement and stuck a post post down in there? No, we didn't put it cement. We just used dirt, but really? stuck a hole. I never asked. Used dirt. Filled it back in with dirt. It's probably got to re be repacked a little bit one more time, but it's pretty good. Did you use a crowbar to tap it down, or what? No, a two-by-four. That's not, that's not going to stay. <laughs> no, it's solid in there, Grim. That's not going to stay. <laughs> no, we, you know, I gotta, we got to repack it a how, little bit. How, how deep is that hole? Uh, three feet? Yeah, oh, that, that's... About the right depth, but once you get that stuff packed in down there, that's not going to hang. All right, well we'll do that. They didn't say we had to submit it. No one else did. No one else submitted theirs. All right, all right. So I don't know. <laughs> it seems pretty good. Okay. Well. So I'm going to repack. We're going to. I'm going to have him repack it though this weekend and get you know take some water out there and put a little water on it. Yeah, you should get like a, you should get like a twenty pound crowbar and, and tamp that down. Yeah, but that that two by four, I didn't think it was gonna work, but it works really good. All right, actually, cool. That's it. All no, right, so great, good job. Who's that? Matt. Matt did that. Yep. yep. Matt. Yep. Right on. So yeah, I mean, uh, they're trying to get rid of the walking routes for the postmen and women. Post people. The postal Post people. people. Postal workers. <laughs> They're trying to get rid of the walking route, so they just use the trucks to deliver. Uh, well, I guess that's quicker. So, it probably is easier. So easier, but quicker, probably. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why, Don. Oh, yeah. Okay, yep. Yeah. No, I can't eat popcorn much. Oh, very it's, much. it's a teeth thing, man. Yeah, it's a teeth thing. <laughs> it's like, no, popcorn does not agree with my teeth at all. So, yeah, that's a no-go on the popcorn. Although I love popcorn. So, oh, thank you, Saki. <laughs> at least, you know, okay, I... We're just doing the intro right now, but we got plenty to talk about tonight. Oh, we've got more than plenty. More than we can handle. Well, there's always so much, and there is. So, oh my God! Okay, so it's starting. The I voted thing. Friends of oh. mine are voting early, and they're bragging about it on Facebook. Bragging about it. <laughs> I voted for the cool sticker and everything. So that's the latest post I just see right now, and it's great, you know. I mean, it, uh, uh, well, uh, shame, shame those people. No, I'm not, I don't say a freaking word. <laughs> I don't say a word. I just shake my head and just move on generally because there's nothing you can say. You know, I say it on this show, but you cannot talk to these people. They have their minds made up. They oh, believe in the system, and there's nothing you can say to them, really, 
to change their mind. I, I, I understand. Or get them to think a different way about things. And, I get it. you know, you just... Uh, I feel bad for them on a level. Um, I just... Looking to government to help you is not... That's yeah. not why they're there. They're not there to help you. <laughs> no, they are not. <laughs> so, if you think that they are... Uh, I know, Sock, they, you feel better about it. I mean, even if it doesn't matter, like, going through the motions and doing it, I guess there's a little bit of a feel-good thing there. There must be, but... Like, for the presidential election, when Trump and Clinton were running it, I'm like, no way am I fucking voting for either one of them motherfuckers. Yeah, I'd say, you know, if if you want to make no change... No fucking way! What? If, if you want to make change, yeah. go, go to one of those machines, you stick a dollar in it, and you get four quarters. Right. Then, that's, then, that's, then you'll have made yep. some change. Right. <laughs> it's just... That's what we've been told, Cowboy Tech, that we need a leader. Quote, unquote, I use that term loosely. Um, Grammy said it good the other night on her show. She said, not the people that are really pulling the strings. The Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and all them motherfuckers. Soros. Buffett, whatever the fuck. That's who's really running the fucking show. <laughs> and if you think that that's not true, you need to do some fucking research. I, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, we've been, we've been, we've been preaching it here for years. and Right. You know. And, it, 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 you know, I get it. Voting, if it was really, truly, you know, not rigged and not not a scam... It would be cool. No, it still wouldn't be cool because <laughs> because what you, you don't you don't you don't get to, you don't get to say on there anywhere. I want nobody. There's, there's right. no there's no option for I don't want any yeah. of you assholes. You don't got to tell me how to run my life. I'll tell myself how to do that, and you can fuck off. Because that's 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 not an if that was an option on there that that enough people could go in there and vote right. nobody. And then nobody would have whatever you know position that was. Yeah, uh, that'd be worth it. But if you're gonna go in there and say I want this asshole to run my life or this asshole to run my life, yeah. I, I don't know. No, that that's that's not an option. <laughs> that's not for me. Right? Yeah. It's just this. This has been forced down our throats for generations. That this is how it is gonna be. This is how it is. This is you know. And then this whole like you have to vote. To do your part, and then they, I see all this all this week and see if you don't vote on November sixth, you can't bitch about it. Anything. Is if that, you don't vote, you can't bitch. Uh, it's like, yeah, no, I can still fucking bitch, motherfucker. <laughs> you know. And believe you me. <laughs> yeah, and you know, don't fucking sit there and blame it all on the not the people that don't vote. Right. Cause that's not who's to blame here. Well, you, you know, here's the funny thing. So sometimes I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be seeing these uh, political ads on the on the TV during the Jeopardy there, and um, <laughs> and it's funny because they'll go right one one idiot right after the other idiot. They're running against each other. Yeah. And they both go on there and and point out all of the corrupt and scummy and terrible things they've done and the terrible things they're planning to do. <laughs> And they're, right. and they're both right. They're, they're both yeah. right. They don't say anything about themselves. All, all they say is that this guy I'm running against, he's the worst son of a bitch in the world. He's been, you know, shown to, to be in collusion with all these, these bad people that mean you harm. Yeah. And then the other guy comes on and says the same thing about the other one. Right. And it's like, the, either one of them, those, that's, that's it's the only... It's mud. It's that, just called mud well, well, whatever. They're both telling the yeah. truth. They're both telling the truth about the other guy. Meaning, right. these, these are your two options. And yeah. They, and they're both horrible. These, we're both pieces of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. Oh, you know, God. I saw a little bit 
of a debate between a Republican and a Democrat running for a state senate or something. And they're both local. And the one, the Republican totally looks so fakey and so fucking phony. And at least the Democrat was a woman. She had good answers, but total, like, I don't know. It was, I couldn't watch it for very long. (laughs) It just happened to be on. And yeah, there's no, yeah. 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 People don't get that part. Right. That same, same, same shit, different flies, there's Mr. Right. Puppet. And it's the there. illusion of choice. Anyway, let's uh, illusion of yeah. choice to some music right here. Yeah. <laughs> but this wasn't an illusion. It was actually was these songs were chosen and will be played. Yeah, no, these are real. Yeah, okay. It's not an illusion, people. Up here. <laughs> I hear you breathing. Nobody here does that anymore. <laughs> That's the uh, the Hell Freaks with uh, Boogeyman. Before that, we had Power Wolf in We Drink Your Blood. And we kicked it off there with Bobby Boy's Picket, The Monster Mosh. Yes, everybody's doing the Monster Mash. Something like that. What? Monster Mash. Everybody's doing the Monster Mash. Yep. It should be. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's Halloween soon. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, you know, next uh, Wednesday, so this is as close as we're going to get to Halloween for our show. Halloween. What's that? Sawin. Yeah. Or Sam That's, or Sam Hain, depending on Well uh, yeah, but they it's spelled S A M H A I N, but it's pronounced like Sawin. Yeah, in Celtic. Okay. Yeah. But in English it's it's it's, it's Sam Hain. Sam Hain. <laughs> Hain. Hain Hain. Sam Hain. Yeah. So anyway, um are you handing out candy, or do you not get any for the chairs? I uh, haven't got any for... I, I leave the lights off, so, you know. Oh, okay. No, then you're not going to get me. You might get some eggs in your house. No, no, they don't bother me. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I, I I'm going to pass I, I, I think, out candy. It's I, I, only like an hour and a half that I get to the feeders. I think, I think all the, I think all the, the kids have uh, grown up right now that used to live around here. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, because you know, it's it's a. Uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of people that moved in or out over these years, and uh, mm-hmm. so I'm pretty sure all the kids have have grown up and gone away. Oh, look at that! That was in there again. I get that in there twice. Yeah, I just get the kids around the neighborhood. It's not that many. So it will be fine, but I'll pass out candy. I'm not gonna unless one of the boys carves a pumpkin. I'm not carving pumpkin. Right? Yeah. If you don't put those things out there, they'll, the kids will stay away. Well, if I leave the light on, they'll come to the door. Sure. So yeah, um, it's not a big deal anymore. I used to do more when the kids were little, but now it's like not a biggie. Right. Some people go all out, though. Oh yeah, no, it's it's you know it's a great holiday. Yeah, it's a fun one. If you're for sure. Looking for holiday stuff to do. Well, this is the weekend that all the Halloween parties happen and everything. Right, right. Because, like you said, it's Wednesday, so yeah. this is like the weekend before. <laughs> oh, oh, I should tell you. Let me let me go back and see if I can find this. Uh, all right. Find this uh, thing that I need. I have to go back to my other page over here. Um, somebody put out this tweet, and uh, uh, I would be under replies, right? Yeah, tweets and replies. Um, <laughs> the other day, because uh, they they want to they want to screw Halloween up. They want to they want to what? 
they they want to make it this terror this this thing where it, it it's only on weekends. And uh, I, think I think we talked about that last year too. Okay. Uh, here, no, was, not sure. here was the tweet. It was from KTVU. Um, it says, No more weekend Halloweens. Petition hopes to convince President Trump to move holiday to Saturday. And So it's always on a Saturday. That won't always be on October 31st, then. And I, and I replied, Screw that. Halloween <laughs> is on October 31st, and it doesn't start until it's dark out. Right. Now, normally... I get nothing. Nobody replies or says anything back yeah. or, or yeah. says any likes to, to my tweets. <laughs> Twenty four likes. Right. Twenty four likes on that one. Nice. Yeah, I, I was I was kind of surprised that anybody even saw my tweet or my, my reply in the first place, um, uh, but they did. So. Um. <laughs> okay. So whatever you do, if you still are a person that likes to get dressed up for Halloween. Have it be traditional. Don't try to do any fucking politicians or fucking blackface. Blackface is a no-no, apparently. Uh, so, well, just a yeah. word to the wise, if you're planning on dressing in blackface, don't do it, would be my advice to you. Because apparently it's not a cool thing. I mean, I never thought it was a cool thing, by the way, but people are making way too much of a big deal out of stuff. And <laughs> it's like, really? Yeah. I mean, some teacher in Iowa, I'm looking for it, but some teacher in Iowa is, being, is under investigation because someone took a picture of her at a Halloween party and she was dressed in a costume that had blackface. And she was dressing as a character from a movie. Right. Who happened to be a black character in the movie, right? Okay. Well, now she's being investigated. So, she'll probably, she'll probably get fired. Um, well, what, what are they investigating? I, it, good question. Uh, Just, oh. It's full of seeing if she's a racist. Because she played a character? Because she is a white person that did blackface, a costume in blackface. Let me see if I can find. It. I'll do a search here instead of scrolling. So, um, okay. Well, while, while we're on that, uh, I'll, I'll cover this little story. Okay. This little story here, which is kind of a Halloween story. <laughs> not, okay. Not, not so much on Loudwire.com. Marilyn Manson, drowning pool, and other music used to interrogate inmates. So it says Marilyn Manson has made a list that is not that not everybody really wants to make, but he seems okay with it. Manson just tweeted a photo of a list that includes material used by U.S. interrogators to be played repeatedly at maximum volume for inmates at detention centers around the world. My new playlist, uh, tweeted Manson, with a link to the listing of acts. Among those included in the postings are Fuck You God by Deicide, Bodies by Drowning Pool, Dirty by Christina Aguilera, Somewhat Damaged by Nine Inch Nails, The Beautiful People by, Mar oh, by Marilyn Manson. Um, wow. this, this next one could be uh, kind of... Uh, disturbing to listen to. Baby One More Time by Britney Spears. Oh, and this one probably would be a problem, too. I Love You Song by Barney and Friends. Um, oh, God. <laughs> we Are the Champions by Queen. That and, would drive anybody in, want to commit suicide with well, Barney. Yeah, but uh, We Are the Champions by, by Queen, and then oh. the Meow Mix theme song. What? <laughs> meow, 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 meow. Oh my God, that would drive somebody insane. <laughs> but but most of those on that list, I'd be like, yeah, play it, play, yeah, do that, do that one again. Uh, right. <laughs> so I found that story. That's all the volume. That's all the volume you got. <laughs> all right. I found that story, and uh, look, I will also look at Iowa news stations. But they say the first line is being investigated for blackface at a Halloween party. Wait, so that doesn't say much there. Right. So, 
I'll copy it. I'll paste it. What the hell? There we go. Um, first grade teacher 32 wore blackface at the Halloween party where she dressed as La Fonda from the Foley Dynamite is under investigation by Iowa School Board. She's being investigated for attending a Halloween party in blackface. Okay. That's not what she's... You're investigating her because of that. But you're not saying what. This is ridiculous. Uh, yeah. This is what... This is... All this government perpetuated, perpetuated racism, this is the result. Shit like this. Okay. They all seem to be having a good time there at the party. I'm looking right, at and it. what Megan Kelly said, she was just playing stupid for saying that. So that that's what happened when that's that's what got rid of uh, Megan Kelly. Who's that? Yeah, Megan Kelly made a comment that it's it, it's okay to dress in blackface, which if it's for a Halloween party. Yeah. You know, oh, but it's not, it's okay, it, it, that's not okay, but it's okay to, like, walk around with a fucking axe in your head. That's okay. Fake axe in your head. That's like, wrong, okay, come wrong. on. Nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? It's Halloween, people. <laughs> you know, but me and Kelly, oh. he was stupid. Well, you know, I, I don't know why why she would get in trouble for saying what she said. It's like, well, it, 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 that's what I'm saying. This has gone too far, Grandma. This is what I'm saying. This has gone way too fucking overboard. People are way too fucking ultra sensitive about this, all this racism crap. Yeah. You know, and we've talked about this on the show before. But government perpetuates racism. And there's sure. a simple reason for that. It's Absolutely. because it keeps people divided. It's one way to keep people divided because the people, if the people are divided, they're easier to control that way. You know. Right. So that's why they do this. That's why they they have they they perpetuate perpetuate all this division among people, be it gender, race, whatever, religion, politics. You know, it's all purposely orchestrated. Yeah. Now, now, tell me if you heard about this, because to me, this is something people should be much more up in arms about, and I haven't even seen it other than this one article on this one place. There's no talk about it, there's no discussion anywhere, and this is scary, actual, truly scary stuff, because this happened this week, and it got, like, no play. Okay. Except on this one site, which is a super lefty site, called Think Progress. And the only reason they put it up there was because they, they don't like Trump. <laughs> Which is fine by me, but whatever. I don't fucking like him either, so... Uh, anyway, so here it is. Trump picks former Monsanto executive... Oh, God. ...to lead U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Oh, my God. What? Have you have you, have you even heard it? That's not even cool. I mean, well, I, I have heard certain other things, but he... He's opening up my, the Boundary Waters canoe area to, to mining and crap. It's like, dude, you're a moron. You That's not making America great again. That's making America toxic. More toxic than it is. Exactly. So, uh, what, you're you stupid. Know. You're, but it's not just him. we got to remember. He's a puppet. You know, we know who's running the string, pulling the strings. Right. It's not the President of the United States. It's a group of motherfucking people that have four percent of the fucking wealth in the in the world. So uh, apparently, this this woman's name is Ariella Skipwith, and it says Trump what? announced uh, Monday that he intended to nominate the former agrochemical industry official to lead the Department of the Interior's Fish and Wildlife Service. <laughs> The selection of Ariella Skipwith, who worked at Monsanto for six years to head the FWS, carries on a Trump administration trend of filling top environmental regulatory positions with officials from companies regulated by the agency. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we'll just put oh one, of your, my God. one of your people in, then that way we make sure. You can't make this stuff up. No, I'm telling you, man. 
So it says, if confirmed by the U.S. Senate, her duties will include enforcing wild, federal wildlife laws, protecting Three. endangered species. Yeah, uh, no, that's not what's going to happen. <laughs> and co conserving and restoring wildlife habitat. No, they're going to kill it all with various Monsanto chemicals. And, uh, or, uh, I guess, bear chemicals now, but whatever. Um, <laughs> oh. it's, it's insanity. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with Lake, Lake Pine, Pine, Pinea, but uh, I am familiar with other bad things the EPA has done. Which is a little different than the EPA, but not much, really. Uh, Lake Pinea, the U.S. state of Louisiana... Uh, da, 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 Iberia, da, 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 da. All right, let's pull that one up here. So, uh, what I was going to say, though, oh, is they're trying to go after the Boundary Waters now and the National Parks, Yellowstone. He wants to open that up. It's like, screw you, buddy. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. There's some things you just got to fucking, people should just know better. By now, we should fucking know better. To leave shit alone. I mean, what the hell? It, it, it's, it, uh, yeah, it's yeah. I, I'm sure there there will be disaster after disaster, but you it won't hear. It's not because they sit here and they fucking lie blatantly and say, "Oh, we care about the environment." And then they turn around and do this shit. But you, you won't you hear. You won't hear what about that? the disaster. You, you won't hear about the disasters. Uh, they'll, they'll, that? they'll cover up as much as they can. It sucks because you're being blatantly lied to, and people buy into it. The lie. Well, how can you? Can't you see what's going on? Uh, well, Forget would... about what they're saying. What is happening? You know what I mean? Right. People are like, oh, 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 it's not affecting me. Well, fucking shit. If it affects the fucking planet and you're a human being, it fucking affects you. Yeah. You know, you're not exempt because you don't fucking buy into it. <laughs> no, no, you're not. Jesus Christ, man, people. <laughs> Wake the hell up! This, oh. you know, to quote Duberzilla, Duber look around. You know? Look around. So anyway, I, I don't know what this lady, she's probably going to lose her job because she, someone, one of her friends took a picture of her at a Halloween party and posted it on Facebook or something, and someone from the school saw it and got their panties in a wad and said, "Oh my God, this right. can't, this isn't right." You know, the lady's at a Halloween party. What do you care? Exactly. What do you care what she does in her personal life? You know, she's gonna lose her job now because of your nosy fucking ass. Right. You know, and that's and that's bullshit. If this lady loses her job, I'm gonna be fucking pissed for her. I you know feel bad for her. Yeah, well, that's... You know, she doesn't... Dressing up for a Halloween party is doing nothing wrong. No, no, and you could bet that will happen, that she'll lose her job, and then she'll probably it, have right. a very difficult time finding a job at another right. place. And this is a teacher, because, you know, a first-grade teacher. She's probably a good teacher, too. Uh, well, you know, we, we, we don't, we, know we don't have that information. But, <laughs> but what I'm saying, though, is... If you're in a role like that, you have to really... But she was even dressed in a specific character. That's what I... You know what I mean? She wasn't just... You know, she was dressing from, like a character from Napoleon Dynamite. Right. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong. She didn't do anything wrong. You know, regardless if she's a good teacher or not, she's probably going to lose her job because of this. And it's just because someone took offense. One person out there took offense to it. And reported her or whatever. You know. But anyway, I just found this story, so I have not read it. But we were talking about robots the other night in the chat room. And I posted a link for a, a robot that Japan has created. And it's very lifelike, guys. It's like creepy lifelike. Mm. Anyway... Um, now I just found this story, which I'm sure Goober will appreciate. Man, you, I've mentioned Goober's name twice, three times I've said, this, said it. Right. Anyway, here we go. 
Chinese researchers reveal real-life Terminator robot that can shapeshift and repair itself if damaged. Oh, T-1000, yeah. yeah. Liquid metal robots that can change their form and repair from damage, just like the androids of the Terminator films, could soon become a reality. Research, researchers in China have developed a palm-sized prototype. Palm-sized? What? <laughs> they, they, they can attack your ankles. You're right. Inspired by a T-1000 from science fiction franchise, albeit a lot less sinister. Yeah, right. Okay. The small, shape-shifting robot could be used to access environments that would be difficult for a human or fixed-shaped box to navigate, such as disaster zones. Uh, the prototype created by a team from the University of Science and Technology of China, University of Wollongong in Australia, is made up of... Uh, made up of a small plastic wheel, a lithium battery, and drops of gallium, a soft silvery metal, according to the South China Morning Post. So anyway, these are palm size, and I'll post a link to this, but, um... Did I already, <laughs> oh, I already posted the link in there. Yeah. But anyway, um... So here you go! Yeah! Um... This stuff's getting uh, weirder and weirder. Well, not this isn't really weird, but it's a pop. I mean, imagine that the, the the cop in the Terminator movie, the one that was like liquid. Yes, yeah, it was the T one, the T one thousand. But these are palm size, so they're like little like an uh, action figures. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I, I guess but they're... still, if they can do it miniature, it's not going to be long before they can make them bigger. Sure. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But we've said before that whatever you see in, on the movies, they've already had that technology for a long time before they, you know, allow Hollywood to fucking show it, you know? Right. They probably already... Who knows? You don't... We don't know. Right? We don't know. We don't know at all. We know some of the stuff, but we don't know all the stuff. Anyway, here's another thing that I just found. It's an app. It's a porn app. It says, come into a living room near you. New augmented reality porn app allows users to project 3D life-size adult actors anywhere. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> So anyway, there's that. Yeah. Um, it says Android users will be able to bring 3D versions of porn stars right into their living rooms thanks to a new app by adult entertainment studio Naughty America. This I week, know Naughty I America. saw that, but, uh, <laughs> but, 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 but 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 it's still just a projection. Or it's virtual reality. Yeah, it's not or you right. Can't, you can't it's like touch a movie. It. You can't you can't touch it or nothing. No, it's not real. It's not like a sex bot or... You know. <laughs> so anyway, there was that. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, it's getting... You can't make this stuff up. I mean... I know. Still, I mean, that would, that'd be good porn, I guess, if you can get them there. And I, 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 I put this link in the, in the chat earlier, but I pointed out the fact that they got this, uh, this naked girl standing amongst a bunch of pink flamingos. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> oh my god! Well, well you know, <laughs> everyone, you can probably get you know pick and choose the background you want. You know, if it's pink flamingos is your thing, you know, great. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just don't, you don't just don't share that info with me. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to know about your kink for pink flamingos. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wow. Uh, all right, let's hear some more music. We'll all right, play. we'll be back on this Freakers uh, Ball Halloween special. All right. <laughs> Enjoy it, people. Oh, you know him. You love him. He's the man behind the mask. Come on, Dad. I'm trying to make a good impression. It's a lovely night, walking in the moonlight. <laughs> Ah, yes. 
Leo Maraccioli covering Marilyn Manson's This Is Halloween. He just released that video today. Uh, thank you, Leo, for that. Very good stuff there. Uh, before that was Rob Zombie and Living a Dead Girl. And we kicked it off there with uh, Alice Cooper. Jason Voorhees, the man behind the mask. Yeah, um, on the iHeart thing, uh, they uh, said that 72 hours from the time I got that email, we would be able to uh, search on iHeart and find the show. And oh. that was yesterday that I got the email. So um, I guess Sunday uh, we'll be able to find Freakers on there. Um, we'll see. But uh, cool. you can look up Hal or, or whatever on there, Hal Anthony behind the woodshed. He's there if you do. I don't know how you – I've never really re listened to any iHeart stuff, so. <laughs> well, we have iHeart Radio – Couple of different ones here in Eau Claire that are iHeart stations. Yeah, but they're, that we're not going to be on the radio. We're going to be on the internet, right? Uh, I I don't know. The I don't know how it works. Only, it's only going to be an online version. It's not going to be live on some radio station. Yeah, I would guess that's probably the an accurate yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So who knows who's going to listen? You know? Yeah, see, there, there, Kate's brought it up there. I farted what? I farted that com. I farted, yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> no, fart radio. I heard, I heard, I heard that com uh, behind the woods. Yeah, but they're a national. Jesus. So we'll probably deal. be on podcast. I heard radio's so. national. All right. Well, yeah, international. I'm yeah, it should be global, right? I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if we get any hits on that. Uh, right, I don't know yeah. if that's a way to no. tell, but... Um, sure. I, I would... Hopefully there's a way to tell how many people tune into it, or whatever. Uh, hopefully there is. I, I, I don't, I can't, couldn't... We'll have to check it out. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. Uh, we, uh, probably people look for new stuff on there, or whatever. I, I don't, I don't right, know. Right, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. It's, it's like when when Grimmier first told me, I was really surprised. I'm like, really? And then um, I was thinking about it later. I'm like, oh, well, maybe I need to clean up my act a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> on look, speakers, I, it's like, I, I think I think they go through the the shows that are already posted, all the stuff on uh, Spreaker. Uh, or I don't know about all of them, but they probably sample uh, some of the shows. Um, right, right. I would think so. And then, and then they probably decide from that um, whether or not they want to allow that on onto their network. And apparently, they found enough to say, okay, we'll we'll do that. Yeah. So. Uh, 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 right. Cool. No, it's it's cool. I mean, because that's like big time. Well. You know, I mean, like I said, we don't know how many hits we're going to get on it. We don't know, you know. No, we have no we idea. We might get new people. We might not. Who knows, you know. But it's a pretty big deal, kind of. <laughs> All right. I I didn't really think too much about it, uh, you know. Really? I mean, no, no, see, it's, like, Kate obviously is a little bit. I mean, you must have iHeart radio stations in your city, too, Kate. You know, whatever radio station you pick up, but you know, here we do, and then they have this huge concert in Vegas, and it's in September. It was just a little while ago, or whatever, and um, they they advertise tickets for it all the time for this big time. You know, it's all different acts, different artists, different genres of music, because they're not just one genre of music. They own like radio stations. You know what I mean? Right, and then they have the 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 online version, also. You know what I'm saying? Where you can pick some shows that you want to watch, listen to, or whatever. You you know what I'm talking? About. Sure. Hello? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No. So it's it, it it'll be interesting to see if anyone tunes in. It will be good to see that, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully we, there's a way we can monitor that, like log into the accounts or something and check it out. I would think we probably can, yeah. Cool. So, okay, to the people of Wisconsin, 
which I don't know if there's many from Wisconsin listening, but instead of bitching about who's going to be the fucking governor, <laughs> but, okay, this is the, okay, this is the, 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 there's a conundrum here, because what happens is, there's no term limits for governor here in Wisconsin, right? Right. So, the governor can be in office for many terms, you know? Right. Well, the, the problem with, well, the issue with Scott Walker, for me, is he's bought and paid for by the Koch brothers. And the problem is, is they have a lot of money. It's not really, it's not a problem for them, obviously. But Walker's going to win, and I've said this again before, recently, on the show, because he's bought and paid for, dude. And the other guy can't compete because they can't do as good of ads or whatever. They don't have as many people backing them. Right? Right. So, what would happen, though, would be if you do want to bitch about something, you should bitch to have term limits, right? The problem with that is, let's say you do get that, right? Okay. They can only serve two terms, right? Yeah. Well, then that court brothers, by that time, they're going to have some other douche that they've paid off to fill the shoes. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's a fuck system. You know? The people you don't want in charge are in fucking charge. And you exactly. could try to fucking beat them, but the, you, you can't. Because he's bought and paid for by someone that has a group of people that has a lot of fucking money. Sure. And they've pumped billions of dollars in into his campaign. I mean, billions of dollars. As if it even matters. That's not no small money, people. That's a lot of fucking money. I, I know, but the thing is, you know, it, it, sure, they they put all that money in, and he does all the, uh, you know, whatever advertising. Their dirty crap, work. It, for them. it doesn't matter because it's all rigged anyway. Yeah, it is. I know, and he does well. But when you think about it, it's a governor of a state. I mean, how much power do they have? They have complete power, and it's not the governor. Well, it's the Koch brothers that have the power. Yeah. And that's the people. That's the, the, the disconnect that people make or have. As, they don't. As, as, they don't follow the money. They don't follow the fucking money. They sit there and bitch about the puppet, but they don't follow the fucking money. And they don't see it. That's why oh, they don't I, see I, it. I think. I think the people in Wisconsin know all about the Koch brothers. Well, yeah, they do, but they. They do know about them, but some of the problem is is half the half the people the voting public backs the guy that they're putting out there. Right. You know, so that's the problem. They, they love their oppressors. Right, and it, it, it's just fucked up, dude. It, this is why I don't. I want to stay out of it. I want to be over. I, I can't take it. It's too fucked up. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's too messed up. I mean, you can't, you know, and it just needs to. I don't know. It, I don't know what needs to happen, but this isn't going to work the way you know. This isn't working, right? For the planet or for the people on the planet, this is not working. So, I get it. Yeah, stay have Facebook. Yeah. I don't let Facebook bug me. Like I don't get in discussions, political discussions on Facebook. It's not worth it. And a lot of my friends are voters, and it, it just I can't. I I I want them as a friend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna like ruin a friendship over politics. You know? Yeah. Unless it was like extreme or something. You know? You know what I mean? Sure, sure. But I just like. Quietly, just sit in the background, you know, watch this stuff, and it's just depressing in some ways to me because it's like, you know, sometimes I'll make comments, you know, to myself out loud, <laughs> you know, about them, but I will not post it on Facebook. You know, it's like I don't even go there. It's like screw yeah, that. You say, yeah, basically. Right, you can't fix them, it, you know, unless I was in face to face with them. In, in a conversation, it would be different, maybe, but via Facebook is not the way to, like... No. No, it's not the place or the way to convince somebody otherwise, you know? Yeah, you know, it's, it's like somebody, sometimes 
people will try and carry on a conversation on Twitter. And it's like, right. you got to be out of your mind. This is not this is not what this is for. It's not a chat room, basically. No. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And that's why I, you know, like, people will ask for advice on the Eau Claire advice site. And I'll make some comments, you know. Like, sure. oh, what's a good restaurant to go to? Or, you know what I well, mean? Well, that's like, easy enough. That's, like that's, that. that's yeah. a simple one, yeah. Right, those are easy. You know, I, I, I'll do that. But I won't, as far as friends urging people to vote or, you know, posting other political things, I just I just try to, like, ignore it, you know. Sure, sure. <laughs> you know? For the most part, because most people don't get me. No, I, I absolutely they don't. I, I'm right there with you. <laughs> you feel that too, I'm sure. You know, because yeah, anybody that thinks like us, most people don't get us. Too. Yeah, they think we're not safe. I can no, no, that's not true. They sit there and downplay it, and you know, I only talk to people anymore that really want to know. You know, like, show a true interest in how I feel about things. You know? You know what I'm saying? Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. If they want to know, I'll tell them. You know? But if they don't want to know, I'm not going to fucking try to force it down their fucking throat. You know? I used to try to think that that was the way, but it is not the way. Yeah, this is the problem with me is, is like, if I'm there, I'm talking to somebody, and, and they say something about how great this, you know, politician or that one is. Right. I'll just laugh at their face. And, and I, it's not that I mean to be mean to them. I just can't help it. <laughs> it's just... Well, I went out with some friends I, for I find dinner. it so so bizarre and unrealistic. And, yeah. And how can you say, you know, how can they be thinking that way? But they do. <laughs> I went out with some friends for dinner, and they were talking. They said, someone said something about typical politician or something. I'm like, yeah, that's why I don't like any politician. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I just right. throw my one-liners in there. You know? You know what I'm saying? Sure. No, absolutely. And that's why I don't like any politician. You know? Yeah. It's like, and how do you know a politician's lying? Their lips are moving. Right. I mean, that's why I can't stand it. I hate being fucking lied to. That's my, one of my biggest pet peeves in the fucking world. I, I hate it. Yeah, you know, yeah, I get it. And I, I, I know I'm being lied to by the government on a daily basis, blatantly to my face. You know? Yeah. Every day. And it's like I take offense to that. Big time. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't like being, I don't know anybody out there that likes being lied to. I'm that, not I, familiar with those people either. So, you know, it's like, really? Don't fucking lie to me. You know, I mean, it would be better off if they put fucking the oldest Rockefeller that there exists now, and who knows how old the fucker is, put him out there. This is the real dude. You know, don't fucking mess around with all this fucking politics and shit. Well, you know, <laughs> tell us the way it fucking is. <laughs> but no, no, they won't do that. No, it's got to be a show, dude. Well, you can't just be Hitler. <laughs> well, here, here, no, no. Consider this, okay? You and I, and probably more people our age, um, know things. We've been around. We've experienced it. Right. But here's this thing that came out earlier this week. New study shows 25 percent of millennials say they have PTSD from the 2016 election. Right. What? I saw a headline today. I'm just like, I laugh. <laughs> PTSD. A quarter of students found the, found the 2016 uh, election so traumatic they now report oh. uh, symptoms of PTSD. Snowflake alert. Snowflake uh, re alert. Researchers surveyed Arizona State University students at the time. And uh, these, are, yeah, these are kids, people. These of, are of 18, Trump's inauguration. 19. In right. 2017, and some had stress scores on par with uh, school shooting witnesses. Seven months follow-ups. 25% of 769 students who were in who were an even mix of genders and races, really like all 300 genders, uh, and <laughs> and socioeconomic backgrounds, reported clinically significant level of stress. The most severe cases were among women, black, and non-white Hispanic students. Um, which, Snowflakes. 
were who were 45 percent uh, more likely to feel distressed by the oh, 2016 God. run between Trump and Clinton. Oh my God! Uh, lead researcher uh, said an assistant professor of psychology at, at San Francisco State University believes divisive tone about race, ide race, identity, and what <laughs> makes a valuable American really heighten the stress of a lot of people. <laughs> So, so I mean, this is something Sorry. it doesn't Sorry. It, do, it does not affect their lives in any way oh what, whatsoever, and it's and, and, and they and they have PTSD over it. <laughs> it's, it it's, like, it's laughable. It's like right? okay. Now this is it's like nice try, snowflakes. This, nice this, try. This this this, this oh. is dealing with millennials. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but, but put the, the whole population because we did a story earlier, like a, a, you know, a while back about if about affecting, you know, the people that believed in Hillary and shit, and they were all fucking distressed. Okay, and they were. Well, they I, were I, I, I I just want to point. <laughs> I mean, major mental illness. <laughs> like really. I, I just really? want. If you I knew just the want... truth, and you knew it was all rigged. You'd wake up, and you wouldn't have this. You have to suffer through this shit. You, you, you know. Come on, people. But I, I just want to point this next thing out for any okay, okay. Uh, people that are out there that are millennials that that think they're they're the young crowd, the the, the young generation. Right, right. Yep, the hipsters. Teen asks the internet how to burn <laughs> how to burn CDs, and millennials okay. are feeling old as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, apparently a 17-year-old from Baltimore just caused millennials on Twitter to plunge into a very early midlife crisis. Alyssa, Alyssa Lucas posted an innocuous question on October 20th, and within hours, of her, not uh, hours her notifications were flooded. The question was simple and completely understandable if you remember being taught yourself. Maybe it's the Generation Z in me. But how, oh, how how did people burn CDs? Like how do oh, you my gosh. how do you just get a blank CD and put songs on it? Oh my God, really? Uh, Lucas asked Twitter masses, <laughs> expecting, expecting perhaps a dozen responses. Instead of hundreds of millennials saw her post at the at the same realization ta uh, in tandem. We're old. <laughs> right. I just I feel literally old right now. We're old. <laughs> no I'm kidding. Oh my god. Great. So, Lovely. So, Wonderful. So so we're we're looking at the, the millennials with PTSD over a stupid election. And, and then right. what, what what happens to them wow. once they realize that they're fucking old because they Holy they crap. They, know, they actually know how to burn a C D. <laughs> Wow, and and, uh, and that's not a thing anymore. That's not a, that's not a thing anyway. There's there's some funny stuff in that article if you read through it. Oh my god, um, <laughs> that's fucking you, hilarious, dude. It, it, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I still got like big old stacks of of unburned well, CDs and DVDs that I'll never use. Yeah. Oh, me too. Yeah. I got. I still have like probably so I got I got two hundred uh, CDs. Yeah, spindles, just spindles worth yeah, of. Yeah, I. Uh, oh CDs, yeah, I got DVDs, DVDs that I'll that I'll never use. And uh, yeah, oh I got they're all in like cases and crap, and they're in my car. They're in cases and stuff. So I just cleaned my car out the other day, and it's like, oh my god, I'm so old school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old school. You are your, oh, but 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 look at it this way. Now your your boys are Generation Z, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know what you call them. I, they were born in two thousand. I don't know. They're eighteen. So they're borderline between millennial and, and yeah, halfway and in between. Z. So we're stuck in pop hip hop music hell. Because this girl. Although that was my one son likes old school music, thank God. The other ones into all the new stuff. I like, really. Exactly, okay, exactly, Cowboy Tech. USB sticks made burning CDs old fashioned. Right, it's just ridiculous they did. stuff. Yep. And and, yep. and um, so now you just gotta wonder what's gonna what's gonna outflank the USB stick, because right. that, I mean that's gotta be coming up pretty quick here. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then another another seven, eight, twelve years down the line, people are saying, "What what's that? What's that USB stick thing? You actually got to connect that to your computer." <laughs> 
Right. I mean, I, I was thinking about burning a CD the other day, actually. Yeah, no. Yeah. It doesn't have the capability. <laughs> sure, know? sure. So it's like, yeah, I could still do that. No, no. You know? And, you know, some kids are... Yeah, they don't understand, you know. No, no, it's hilarious. It's great stuff. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have this fascination with phones, you know. Yeah. Like the old old school phones, you know. Right, right. So I have a rotary one and a touch tone one. Like the old school, like from the late 70s or something, you know. <laughs> They're like, why do you want this? I'm like, because. I just did. You know, it reminds me of something. You know, it reminds me of my childhood. Yeah. You know, different time yeah. in my life. You know, whatever. Right. You know. But, but one thing <laughs> is, one, one thing is, uh, a lot a lot of these youngsters still embrace the vinyl. Right. Oh, vinyl is making a huge comeback. Yeah. Like I, I actually took all my vinyl records out of the closet like, recently, and then my son Matt helped me put them back in. You know, because they were going up on upper shelf in a closet. You know. Right. But I have like two Charlie Pars. I have one Perner Sandstone. You know what I mean? So I kept those, like, separate. Mm hmm And then, I, but I have, like, multiples of some of them. But they're good ones, you know. Yeah. Like, I got, like, two emotional stuff, Rolling Stones Emotional Rescue. You know? Sure, sure. And they're in great condition, but I just kept them. Matt's like, what are you going to do with all these? I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, they don't, you know what I mean? These are classic albums. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're classic. The covers on them are not perfect. But I have, like, probably four Grateful Dead different ones. The best one is Long Strange Trip. It's a double album. Right. And that one is, like, in plastic. Like, I got that as, like, a record. Like, a sale. You know what I mean? Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, but it was, it was worth the price. I mean, it's, like, in mint condition. Right. So, I mean, but I... The, a lot of the the artists now are are putting out vinyl. Not to, they're putting out CDs still, but not as many. A lot of them have like they'll they'll give you a download. You know what I mean? Like you have to you can buy the album in many formats. You can buy a vinyl. You can buy the CD. You can buy the the down the download. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. So that's a smart move. So there's the yeah. I do have a turntable to play them on. I the neighbor actually. I have an old school one. It's really wicked. It's like from the late seventies or yeah. something. Do you have whatever an era? You, you have an but amp? It, it it's in the living room. No, there, there's two speakers built in. It's like a built in. It looks like an end know. table. Okay. But then like the turntable, like you open the doors, the turntable like pulls out. It's really wicked. <laughs> it's <laughs> wicked, dude. It's pretty big, too, you know? Yeah. I could probably hook an amp up to it, because there is, like, two hookups in the back. You know, there's only, yeah. like, two or three hookups in the back of it, you know, because it's old. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. But it sounds pretty good. I <laughs> mean, cool. the only ha thing wrong with it is the turning thing for the radio, because it has a radio on it, too. Mm -hmm. That's stuck on a station. Like, uh. it doesn't, like, turn... Well, just have, just have Matt get in there. It's just the uh, the there's the string that that pulls. The yeah, thing. I'll have Matt check it out. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not that. He likes taking stuff apart. Uh, I've I've had to repair yeah. those before. So I'll have him talk to you because you know what to uh, look for. Because I have no just idea. Tell him, just tell him to go on YouTube. It'll, 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 yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. Somebody's got it. <laughs> but it's a really it's I, it's a Magnum Lock brand. It's really cool. It was it was high end at the time. I'm sure. Oh, I'm it's sure. Wicked, yeah, yeah. yeah cuz the turntable the thing pulls out. You can actually put it back in when the record's still playing. Cuz like the speakers are on the side and come all on the side, you know what I mean? Right. It's really wicked. Like the neighbor had it and she didn't want it no more. I'm like, okay, I'll take it, you know. Cool. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it was, oh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I've actually played albums on there, so I know it works. But um, yeah, I still it's got my, fun. I still got my old turntable, but uh, I, I, I haven't hooked it up since I moved here. Right, you just got to hook it up to the receiver. Yeah, and hook the speakers up. Yeah, but I found out my speakers that I had for my stereo, my JVC speakers, they're junk. Because you know the cone, they have a cone. Yeah, it's pushed in. Yeah. Once that's pushed in, you're fu they're fucked. I have a Yamaha system that kicks ass. Yeah. See, the JVC, the JVC speakers I bought at the time were very good. 
they were good speakers. <laughs> JVC was always pretty cheap. Yeah, but they were. Well, they weren't the best new top of the line. I'm not saying that. Right. At all, no. But they served my purpose. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just for like a receiver, just to have a stereo and oh, have sure. somewhat no, decent no. speakers, you know. Yeah, I but know, then that's I had right. yeah. Yeah. The boys got into them, and when some cones are popped in, you're done. You know, the cabinet part's probably still good, but not the actual speakers that are in You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, easy, easy They're basically to, junk. Easy enough, to re- easy enough to replace those. See, that would be good if I just replaced the speaker part, because the cabinet part's fine. Yeah. And it's cool right. looking, so... Anyway, let's play some more music right here. All right, let's do that. Yep. And, and uh, we'll come back after these. And Sounds good. It's a, it's a bunch of short ones, or shorter ones anyway. So uh, this is uh, Frank Black and the Catholics. <laughs> oh, Rob Zombie, everybody scream there. Before that, we had Amelda May doing It's Good to Be Alive. Uh, preceding that, a Miss Kate request, Wednesday, Wednesday Adams, teaching Lurch how to uh, do the uh, James Brown dance there. Uh, also a Miss Kate request, Alex Jones in Halloween back in 1997. And, <laughs> and we kicked it off there with another Miss Kate request, the Black Writer, Frank Black and the Catholics. So, uh, yeah, happy Halloween to y'all. <laughs> oh, my God, you freaking scared me, dude. He came in before the song ended, and I'm like, oh, my God, I wasn't expecting that. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Oh, that was man. funny. Yeah. <laughs> so I found this story tonight. Okay. The experiments that inspired Frankenstein. Oh. History, pro- history professor reveals the macabre medical test behind the monster. On January 17th, 1803, it's a long ass time ago, a young man named George Foster was hanged for murder at Newgate, Newgate Prison in London. After his execution, as often happens, his body was carried ceremoniously across the city to the Royal College of Surgeons, where it would be publicly dissected. Ooh, I wouldn't want to watch that. Like, that wouldn't be something I'd be like, let's go watch the dissection. Right. You know, ooh. But what actually happened was rather more shocking than simple dissection, though. Forster was going to be electrified. The experiments were to be carried out by the Italian natural philosopher Giovanni Aldini, the nephew of Luigi Galvani, who discovered animal electricity in 1780 and for whom the field of galvanism is named. With Forster on the slab before him, Aldini and his assistants started to experiment. The Times newspaper reported that on the first application of the process to the face, the job the deceased criminal began to quiver. The joining muscles were horribly contorted and one eye was actually, actually opened. Me. The su- in the subsequent part of the process, the right hand was raised and clenched and the legs and thighs were set in motion. Well, that's just, you know, simulating the muscles. You know what I mean? Sure. I'm not going to keep reading that, but um, it's right. pretty interesting Okay. So it might not be as far fetched as everyone thinks. You know, everyone thinks Frankenstein's just made up, right. made up tale. But I don't think so. No, no, you know, I think it was uh, Mary Shelley had her. Uh, that, was, that was her era, and uh, right, right, and she knew about these experiments that they were doing. Right. This is just the one that everyone heard about or something, apparently. But apparently, they used to dissect bodies in public. <laughs> so what the hell is up with that? Oh, okay, well, I that gotta... would be fucking. Why would you go watch that? Why would you want to go watch something like that? Uh, Unless you were, you know, a medical it, examiner or coroner. It was something new and different back then. Apparently, wow. All right, well, I have, I have a. Uh, 
Okay. Scary story for All right. Florida people. Cute ball of fluff is actually a caterpillar with sting so sore it hurts your bones. This, uh, apparently, this cute ball of fluff is actually America's most venomous caterpillar with a sting so painful it can make your bones ache. The puss caterpillar. That's correct. That's what they call this. <laughs> the puss. P-U-S-S. -S, caterpillar is currently making its biannual appearance in Florida with experts warning locals to keep themselves, their kids, and their pets well away from it. University of Florida entomologist Don Hall told the National Geographic a puss caterpillar sting feels like a bee sting, only worse. The pain immediately and rapidly gets worse after being stung and can make even make your bones hurt. Dr. Alvard Alega from Florida Poison Control Center told WSVM that the insects got their name because of their resemblance to a cute, fluffy pussycat. <laughs> oh, God. He, he, he explained, because the way they look, they're very attractive. They call them puss caterpillars because it looks almost like a cat, and it makes you want to touch them and see how soft they are. But they have some, some uh, stinging hairs that the caterpillars use as a way to protect itself. Uh, the puss caterpillar is... is what? The puss caterpillar is most active in spring and fall, it, with its fluffy hairs can, can covering venomous spines that become lodged in the skin. Here, I'll, I'll put a picture of it up there on the screen. Yeah, 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 there is. Let me uh, get this up here real quick. Uh, da, 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 if I could find my thing here. Where's my screen cap? There it is. All right, there, there, there's a picture of it right there. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me zoom in a little on that. Zoom, 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 zoom. There you go. There's your puss caterpillar. Stay away from those. <laughs> it does look a little, I don't know, it doesn't even look like a caterpillar. It just looks like a little ball of fluff there. That's weird. What is it? It's a caterpillar. Okay, what what what's weird about why you gotta stay away from them? Didn't you hear that story I just read? I I was listening, but I was also distracted because, because it's got a got a sting so strong it it, it makes your your bones hurt. Okay, well yeah, stay away from them. <laughs> sorry, I was distracted. Someone pulled something. I got sorry. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. didn't mean to ignore you, Grandma. <laughs> Anyway, there it's it is. Am I listening? <laughs> <laughs> there's, your, there's your puss caterpillar. I'll, I'll okay, you. that I, looks, yeah, that thing's bizarre looking. Well, what I was posting was someone posted a pro picture of a program from the World Series and the Twins and the Dodgers played each other. And I have a copy of the program from the 1965 World Series that was my grandfather's. When he went to the game, and it's perfect condition except for his, he, they have a little sticker of name tags. Mm -hmm. He put it on the top of the program. Okay. His sticker, the sticker that has his name on it. All right. Says, Hello, my name is, you know. Yeah. But otherwise, it's in great condition. But I had to comment on that link, that post, because someone posted a different program from the World Series when the Twins played the Dodgers in 1965, which is before I was born. Um, and so I had to comment because I have an actual program that was my grandfather's when he went to that game, one of the games in the World Series that year, which is pretty fucking cool. I think. Right. But anyway, sorry to get that sidetracked there. That's all right. Okay, I have a story here, a Halloween story, an actual Halloween story. All right. Canton, which is Ohio, uh, cracks down on man's Halloween charity display. Uh-oh. For lack of permits. Oh, no. How dare you? Permits. Oh, shit. <laughs> no guts and gore. Just startles and scares. Ghouls, yeah. ghouls and goblins, kids and parents beware. Welcome to Skullman's Ghastly 
Gasly Garage. Hundreds <laughs> check out the neighborhood attraction in Canton Township every single year. Mm -hmm. But more frightening than his do-it-yourself haunted house is the phone call creator and homeowner Michael Fillion received from the Canton Fire Marshal. Oh, crap. I had to shut down because I don't have the proper permits that I didn't realize I needed to have a home haunt. Most neighbors love the ghastly garage that Fillion sets up every Halloween, but one neighbor apparently does not. They of course not. They reported so him. Be offended, people. They reported him to the township, which of says, "Of course they did." Which says because his setup is so elaborate, Fillion needs oh, to no. needs a special event license what? and an oh, and an inspection to operate his Halloween house of horrors. What? Okay, this is this is where this is what we get, people. You get these; they tell you if you see something, say something. It doesn't mean if it offends you, you say something. That's not what they. Well, maybe it is, but this is we're taking this way too far, people. So if you're bad about your neighbors, his his Halloween thing is too elaborate for you, and you feel he needs to pay money to put it up. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. And who are you to decide that, neighbor, nosy yeah. neighbor? Yeah. Anyway, it says now he has to scale back or get sticker shock from the township fine. Oh, whatever. Uh, I was really upset, said Vic, Vicky, a neighbor. Yeah, we've been we've, we've been having this going on for years, and uh, right. my grandkids were looking forward to coming over and going through the right. haunted house. It's a shame because this has been a great community outreach and also That's helping helping people who need food. So yeah. This, this guy was helping the needy. You know? Yeah, he was already helping people, needy, you know, ch charity or something. But but helping the needy is not well, allowed. Not good enough. Oh, no. Helping, no, helping the needy to help the charity. No, you can't do that. No, you can't, yep, do, that. can't do that. Let's, no, no, can't do that. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. the hell? This is what's wrong, people. This is part of the problem. Anyway, um, I was going to say... There's a house two blocks away from us, and we've lived here 12 years. So my kids retreated from the age they were old enough to do that until the time they stopped. And they put up a elaborate display, and it's called the West Side Insane Asylum. West Side Insane Asylum. Right. And they have, a, like, a guillotine, a fake guillotine. They got, like, bodies with blood on them and stuff. You know, I'm sure if this was in that township, that would have been fine, too. You know what I mean? Right, unless some neighbor... Right, they, they have a permit, you know. Yeah, well, it, it's, if some neighbor starts bitching about you, then, then you're right. screwed. Right, but you know what, kill it's like after the fact, they, after it's put up and everything, they call, oh, this isn't good. We, I, it offends me. Really? Yeah, whatever. I mean... Yeah, what a bunch of crap. You know, all, throughout my whole life, people have been putting up haunted houses in their houses, and right. no, nobody ever asked for a permit. <laughs> Right. What's next? You know? You're, you're going to need a permit to hand out ca Halloween candy because and, and yeah. it will all have to be inspected up front. <laughs> yeah, screw that. And I won't have to pass out candy. Well, right. Nobody will, and, and that'll probably be what they want. I mean, when I was out to dinner, we were reminiscing on how it used to be at Halloween, where we there was no set time limit. You just went from the time it got dark till about 10 o'clock. And anybody that had their light on after 10 o'clock, sometimes we'd go to their house just to see if they'd answer the door. I mean, that was when I was trick-or-treating age, so you're talking a long time ago, but it used to be funner, <laughs> you know? But I guess the world's gotten all weird, too, since then, but, well, not like it wasn't then, but, you know. Um, so, like, there's only... The kids get two hours to trick or treat in Eau Claire. Yeah. Five to seven. Five p.m. to seven p.m. Screw that! It's not even dark yet. Yeah, screw that. Well, it gets dark at about six now. Yeah, well. But still, Halloween. Like really, Halloween, Halloween doesn't start lame, until it's dark out. Right? How lame is that? Like we used to go from like for four hours. We used to go for over oh, four yeah, hours trick or treating. We'd run wild in the streets on Halloween, absolutely. We brought, yeah, we brought pillowcases and stuff because we knew we were going to hit it hard. When we got older, we were allowed to go by ourselves, which is like at age 10. Yeah. 
you know, we were allowed to go by ourselves at age 10. You know, right, right. up to like age 13, I think I stopped trick or treating. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we'd go all night. We'd go four, four and a half hours. You know? Right. Yeah, and that's times have changed, man. Oh, absolutely. Every day they're, they're in your business to the nth degree at this yeah, point. They don't want you doing nothing. You know, and there's actually curfews in the city here, you know, Claire. There's a curfew, so. Well, what's the curfew? Midnight. Oh, that's all right. I mean, for, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not. A, it's, it's not. It's, it's, it's under not. A, it's a, oh, I mean, look, Claire. It's not all right, but no, it's not like it's seven o'clock or something. No, it's not abnormal. It's not unusual, but it's after after midnight. Eight, if you're eighteen or under, or under eighteen, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a juvenile curfew. You know what I mean? But uh, here, speaking of the the government getting getting in your face about stuff, uh, this is about them getting stopping stuff from getting in your face. Okay. P- pizzas must shrink or lose their toppings. What? Un- under, what? what? Uh, under government anti-obesity plan. <laughs> No, pizza's being attacked. Are you no, kidding no. me? They, they, oh they, my god! They, they want to, your pizzas to be smaller or have or have no toppings or less toppings. What? Under government plans to cap the calories. No, this is sacrilege, people. And, 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 this is not good. It says in thousands of meals sold in uh, restaurants and supermarkets. What's that? Pies, ready meals, and sandwiches will also be subject to the new proposed calorie limits in a desperate bid to tackle Britain's obesity crisis. Oh, my God. No. Uh, okay, I'm, at least it's Great Britain, not the U.S. yet, right, Jeff? Yet, yet, yet. But, they, but that's kind okay, of a testing good. ground over there. No, it, it'll never work in the U.S. This, anyway, this so, will uh, never fly. Anyway, it says, under the, under the draft proposals, a standard pizza for one should contain no more than 928 calo- calories, far less than many sold by takeaways. Oh, my God. Oh, watch what you eat and exercise, people. And the recommend well, but now the government is going to mandate that. Oh, my God. The government should not be telling us what, no, it, that should be common sense. It's No, this is meddling with pizza is not cool. Well, med- meddling with anything you do for right. or to yourself is none of their business. Exactly. Um, but, know, but, the, but this is absolutely what they, uh, they have over there ridiculous. now. Ridiculous. Um, this is now, ridiculous. Now, my, my thing is, well, if they're going to make it so you have to have smaller pizza, you just, you just, <laughs> you just buy two. You can't uh, control what someone's going to fucking eat. You, you, you oh, my just, God. You people. just buy two of them instead. I, right. I, I, what the hell? But that's not fair. You know. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> of course it's not fair. But, but, Nothing's but, fair at government. But, 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 but this doesn't, yeah, this doesn't, uh, this doesn't affect uh, any, anybody's thing there. Um, Messing with pizza is not cool. That's all I'm saying. It's not cool. Pizza's fucking pizza. I mean, okay. leave it alone. And then they list they list an area or a, a, a chart here. It says ten areas where your six year old children are most likely to be severely obese, and they list a bunch of cities. Oh God! So it's like, oh, so the the parents are it's feeding. It's called don't feed your kids McDonald's every fucking day, <laughs> and make sure they're in sports or something, some kind of exercise thing. So they don't get fat. And you're not feeding them shit. It's not. It, it is common sense, people. Yeah. It's common fucking sense. And I'm not saying I never fed my kid McDonald's because I did, but I tried to make it very limited, you know, because and I cooked as much as many homemade meals as I could for them, and it right. paid off because they neither one of them have an issue with that. But it's for the children. It's like, you guys, it's just fucking common sense. Don't rely on the government to tell you how to raise your fucking kids. Oh my God. You know? Oh, man. I tell you. Oh, my yeah. God. This is just unbelievable. <laughs> we can't, it, we, it, we it, don't make this stuff up. This isn't the onion, people. This no. is, like, real shit. This is, like, stories that are out there. Right. This is what's I mean, going on. This is what. cannot make this stuff up. This is real. the real deal here. Yeah. I mean, this isn't the Onion or a satire show. We wish it was sometimes. <laughs> well, it, it's also... <laughs> Sadly, it is not. 
Sadly, it is not. It is not. It's, it's, it's all so, everything is so bizarre. It, it, it's just bizarre. Like, we don't have to make shit up. <laughs> you know? Okay, okay. We don't and, have to now, make now, up. Now, I know, I know how you feel about chewing gum. Be because it's... Yeah, because, because it wrecked, it wrecked chewing gum for me because I used to love gum when I was a kid. Right, because it's all, cause it's all got... It's it's no. all got aspartame in it, but here. Yeah, it's, it, there's two brands that I saw that have real sugar in them, and my kids hated me for it at the time. But I was had a strict no aspartame gum at all, or no aspartame. Period. Okay, well then that's yeah. fine. How would you how would you feel about this? Oh God, <laughs> this could be bad. Electric chewing gum zaps your tongue to create oh, a yeah. virtual flavor hit. I saw, oh my god, girl, I saw this, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, uh, come on. <laughs> researchers. Okay, I've heard of Pop Rocks before, <laughs> but this is going to, people, someone's going to fucking die, people. You know, uh, someone's going to die because there's going to be a flaw or a fluke in one of the fucking samples that the public gets. And someone's going to fucking let you. No, it, 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 it's, it's just. No, take it off the Oh, it, be, no, oh. no, 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 there's, there's not enough juice in these. Oh, okay. Uh, but it's just so it's like putting your tongue on a 9-volt battery. Then. No, not even that. Not even that much. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Well, it, it, it's more like... Uh, but still. Uh, from a thermocouple. Uh, the, the amount Why? of juice you get off a thermocouple. Anyway, uh, re re researchers at Meiji University in Japan have developed a piece of chewing gum equipped with piezoelectric elements and electrodes that stimulate taste buds as, as long as it's chewed. Weird. So it will never lose its flavor because it's just zapping okay. the shit out of your tongue. So you <laughs> make your, your taste buds... Your that might not be good for your tongue. Your, your taste just buds may die. Anyway, the, the technology right. called unlimited electric gum produces a small electric current when it is chewed, which tricks the, the tongue into sensing different tastes. The gum currently produces a salty or bitter taste, which is gross, and the researchers think Ew. that by varying the patterns and strengths of the electric charge, they can induce all five of the basic tastes, bitter, salty, sour, sweet, and umami? I guess that's the okay. flavor, umami? All right. It must be a Japanese thing. Let me do my little dictionary thing here. Okay. Um, it says umami, a category of taste in food, besides sweet, salt, sour, and bitter, corresponding to the flavor of glutamates, especially monosodium glutamate. Okay. Weird. Um, sounds cool. gross. Uh, any, anyway, um, <laughs> so so uh, I guess they uh, think they can make it so that you can. Um, I don't know. It just sounds wrong. It, uh, I, I just, it doesn't sound good. I, no. I, I, I just. Uh, no. I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> oh, look at look at that! Look at that um, link Kate put in there. Uh, the 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 mail bomb suspect says he found a father in Trump. Oh my God! Okay, can I puke now? <laughs> I don't have a nearby. Sorry. <laughs> really? Come on! How much more set up can this be, people? Come on! <laughs> He's Trump Daddy. Trump Daddy. Oh my God! Pew pew. Bleh. Oh, that's oh, just okay, hilarious. Man. See, this shit gets weirder and weirder every fucking second. It does. All right, let's play some more music. Let's um, do that. It's Halloween time, people. That's right. It's all spooky. No. Okay. <laughs> Oh, pro-Trump, anti-democratic content. Okay, he liked the the clown on the other circle. That's fine. That works. <laughs> he didn't realize they're all they're all in the same circus. This is ministry. Folks, that was called O oh Sheep. And if the uh, voters out there 
did not get the message from that video. I don't know what to tell you. I guess it's probably why you're still voting. Uh, anyway, uh, I thought it was very poignant. Not a Halloween video, but it was bloody enough to qualify for the show. Uh, anyway, before that, we had Halloween doing Halloween, and we kicked it off with Ministry. Every day is Halloween. So. <laughs> of course it is. So, so if you if you watch that O Sheep video and didn't get it, I don't know what to tell you, man. That's a that's a. <laughs> Uh, uh, that's how they do. That's how they do. You got, you got these two fake sides splitting up the sheep because they didn't want them to have a good time being happy together. And and every time time they tried to split them up in a, a normal way, w without making them uh, different than each other. <laughs> but as soon as they made them different than each other, then the sheep hated each other. Or they pointed out, oh look at that, I you got stripes, I got dots. Oh well, you're you're not the same as me. We, we got to go after each other. Ah. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> oh yeah, this one I decided. I decided. Oh, yeah, I got a couple real freaky ones. That's that's right. That are not necessarily Halloween ones, but they're pretty freaky. <coughs> I didn't even put a comment here in the list. Freaky enough for freakers. That's pretty freaky. <laughs> How are you so phenomenon? It's the I heart phenomenon, Kate. Goober. Hey, Goober. Hey, how's it going? That's like the fourth time I've said your name now on this show tonight. I use your phrase. I use one of your famous quotes. Look around. I like that one, though, because people do not look around. They believe what they're told. They don't look around. They don't. No, and they need to. Yeah. I don't believe what I hear. I believe what I see. And when I hear, when they're telling me one thing, but I'm seeing another, I'm like, uh, this something's wrong here. Someone's lying, you know. Sure. I mean, it pretty much comes down to you're either with them or you're not, or uh, for them or not. Okay. Better way to move it. That's the wrong word. Um, I decided that I'm not for them. I'm anti-war, and. I don't like motherfucking bastards being in charge. <laughs> Basically, it comes down to that in a nutshell. For me. Right. Because all wars are bankers' wars, right, Grim? Absolutely. And whose quote is that? Um, Rivero? Smedley? Mike Rivero? Is it? I guess. I think it was said before that, though. Smedley Butler or something. Probably. I don't know. Well, there's that famous new, uh, clip. It's a movie clip. It's, it's Smedley Butler. He was a general in the Army or something. The yeah, Armed no, Forces. Yeah. And I think... Let me look it up quick. I need to... Um... I don't think Mike made that statement up. Which it is a true statement, but I don't think I, we should... You know, he gets to take credit for it. I don't know. The video, he had, he had it posted up on his site, so... Oh, yeah. I saw his blog or whatever. Yeah. No, it might be it might be Mike. I could be wrong. Don't get me wrong here. Um... Yeah, it is Mike Rivero. Okay. I think. I, I think it was But then video. there's the other... Let me look up this other person. Go ahead, what? Um, I'm pretty sure it was his video that I... Yeah, yeah, you're right. No, I'm sorry, I take it back. Hey, I, Mike, I'm, I meant no offense. <laughs> Just letting you know. Oh, War is a Racket. That's what I'm thinking oh, yeah. of. I about, or, or, I'm going to post that link because if you have not seen this, 
You should. Because it's it, it makes sense. I mean, it, it, it just does. Because it is a racket, and it's not meant to, to protect us. It's a money-making scheme for the banksters. War. Yeah. And I'm a Civil War buff, because I'm a history buff. So... When I find out that, like, years ago, when I found out that both sides of the Civil War were funded by the same fucking people, I was pissed, <laughs> you know? Understandably so. Because that was a... So many lives were lost in such a brutal fucking way. And when you were injured, like, amputations in the field with no antiseptic or no fucking painkiller or anything, mm -hmm. that had to be beyond fucking brutal. It had to be. Oh, yeah. But oh, then yeah. you go back to the Revolutionary War and you think about Valley Forge, right? Right. And it was during the winter time in Delaware, right? Right. And it gets fucking cold there. It's fucking snow there. Sure. It gets below zero there and shit at times. Or brutally cold. You right. know, below freezing. People freezing to death. You know? People freezing to death. People losing fucking toes due to fucking frostbite. Okay. Yeah. That had to be brutal. I mean, we're talking 1776, baby. There was no, like, I mean, there might have been morphine, but they ran out of morphine. You yeah, know? I, I don't even know what they had back then. But well, I don't even know what they had or what they used. They probably used cocaine, for Christ's sake. Something. But what I'm saying is, it's brutal. And then you, and then I go, I fast forward to the Vietnam War, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we all know the history of World War II, or the supposed history of it, right? Right. Beyond brutal. Okay? Let's fast forward to the fucking Vietnam War. Brutal as fuck. And the lovely government decides to fucking provide addictive drugs and beer and cigarettes to the soldiers because while they're in the field fighting, right? Sure. Even LSD, for crying out loud. Can you imagine being in Vietnam and trying to be in a war and fight while you're high on LSD? Or I, heroin? I or I, something? I can't imagine. What's that? Or even drunk? I, I can't imagine not being on LSD if I was there. Right, yeah, that, exactly. You know, <laughs> it would be, I mean, it was brutal, people. It was fucking beyond brutal. And they could have stopped it. Like, Six years before it ended. But they kept it going purposely. And this is part of another reason I fucking hate government. It's well, because there are a bunch of motherfuckers that put, you know, there was a draft of the Vietnam War. Yep. Like, that wasn't a voluntary sign-up, people. No, no. You know, you had to go and watch on TV if your, your, your date of birth was called. If your date of birth was called, guess what? You were going to knob. Yeah. You know? Can you imagine how fucked up that could be? Horrible. How nerve-wracking that would be? Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, they they made the draft. They, they made it mandatory to sign up for that shit. But back then, they didn't. Back then, it was a lottery, they said. Oh, yeah, I won the lottery. No, that was a different kind of winning the lottery. That was not winning at all. When, you, right. when they call your birthday, baby. You know? Sure. And the thing about it was, if you were in college, you were exempt. Well, guess what? Most of the kids in college were rich fucking kids. Sure. Sure. So it didn't affect the suburbs as much as it affected the ghetto. Right? Right. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, but, cool, I get that, but I'm talking about the time the U.S. was there. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and they could have ended it six er years or something like that earlier than they did. They perpetuated it. They kept it going. It was a fucking experiment, basically. Yeah, you know? They, they, they got the U.S. in on a false flag, so. Yep, they did. And, you know, when I look back at the history and I think about all these things, 
I'm just like, you know what? This is bullshit. Yeah. You know, fuck this. Well, I mean, how, speaking you of, know, both uh, sides of the Civil War are funded by the same people. Hello? Speaking of uh, wars and scary shit and government insanity. Yeah. Here's this. Trump threatens to build up U.S. nuclear arsenal until right. Russia and China come to their senses. See, this is, oh my God. The U.S. is the big old bully of the fucking world. Yay. So it oh says, my God, you know, come on. So it says, it says uh, Trump threatened Russia and China that Washington intends to build up its nuclear arsenal until people come to their senses. The president said his words were directed towards Moscow and Beijing, and he prepared to unilaterally leave the Intermediate Nuclear Forces in Europe Treaty, the INF. Uh, the U.S. president implied China should be part of any new nuclear arms control treaty. Russia has not adhered, adhered to the agreement, as if the U.S. has. Neither in form or in spirit, Trump told reporters outside the White House on Monday before departing uh, for a campaign rally in Texas. Until people come to their senses, we will build it up. So you're going to make all these insane things until they do what you want. It's got nothing to do. <laughs> Settle down there, Frumpy. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but it's it's insane. I, 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 it says, it's a threat to whoever you want. It includes China, and it includes Russia. He says directly, I am threatening you. I am going to threaten you with nuclear devastation, a nuclear annihilation, because you're crazy. Wait, who's the one threatening people with nuclear annihilation? Who's the crazy one? Uh, it says the U.S., has more money than anyone else by far, Trump added, implying that an arms race wouldn't come as a burden. You can't play that game on me. Who sounds crazy? Right. <laughs> oh, my God. So this treaty, I guess it's been around since June of 98, was a major achievement of Cold War and helped defuse oh nuclear God. fears in Europe. If Trump goes ahead and withdraws from the treaty... That would leave the strategic arms, re the, the START treaty, the new new START treaty, as the last what? obstacle to uncontrolled nuclear proliferation. And that treaty uh, will, oh will expire in 2021, and Washington has not yet decided on renewing it. So you folks out there, and you're thinking, oh, Trump 2020. Uh, Think again. Yeah, because... But, but see, here we go, talking about, like, we have a choice in the matter. No, I don't, I know. There it, is but, no choice in the fucking matter. But but if they leave him in there, then you know why. It's because they want well, to... Well, yeah. They want to nuke the world. Um, and to, well, they want to rape the fucking planet more because he's going after the boundary waters. He's going after the national parks. He's going after Alaska. It's like, come on, dude. You know, and then they, they'll tell you, oh, yeah, we want to protect the environment. Just, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you do not. Yeah, that's why, that's why you appoint the uh, Monsanto don't people to run the me. Interior Department. Right, yeah. just tell me what you're planning on doing. Don't fucking sit there and act like you're not planning on destroying the planet more. Oh, Fuck you. Fucking you know? Man. Oh, my God, I get so sick of it, dude. Like... No. It's ridiculous. No, you know, no, no. It, it, it's to the point where, you know, like I was talking earlier, I can't talk about this stuff to most of my friends because they're wrapped up in it and you can't get through to some people and I want to have some friends. So I try to, like, downplay it. If, you know, it depends on the situation, but I really cannot talk about this stuff like I do on Freakers Ball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like... Because it's, it's intense for some people, and I get it, because they're hooked. Some of people don't even know it, you know? Right. That's why, I, you know, the Smedley Butler thing, and I, I'm sorry, I have to apologize to Mike Rivero, because all wars are Baker's wars, belongs to Mike Rivero, and war is a racket, belongs to Smedley Butler. But it's, right. it's the same premise. Sure, absolutely. So I would suggest looking up both of those things. 
and and you know researching both of those things. <laughs> Uh, it's all insanity. Yeah. Also, Lysander Spooner, while we're on that subject, or Locker and Rose. Right, sure. Look up uh, Lysander Spooner. There, there's a ton of great old people that, yes. that, that have, you know, come out with the needed information. It's all there, and it's been talked about for centuries. And, right. And and it just continues to get more and more oppressive every yep. year, uh, every day, I guess. I don't know. Um, uh, be, because people just accept it. They demand it at this point. Uh, right. Right. They want the government to take care of them. The government doesn't want to do that. They'll give you some fucking crumbs and shit. Yeah, I, did, I, I, I did see that link, Kate, um, about the that world's longest bridge, uh, sea crossing bridge. And and my, my question was, and I may have asked it in the chat, I don't remember, um, well, what happens if you're out there halfway across this bridge and your car breaks down? And you're right. Out there, you're out there in the middle of the fucking ocean. <laughs> right. You know, unless someone stops to help you, they got tow trucks or something. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm sure they have tow trucks that'll go out there. Yeah, I suppose so. You know. It just seems kind of nuts to be driving that, that far out there across the ocean. Right. Yeah. Anyway, this whole nuclear arms thing, man. Uh, it's it, scary. You know, it, you get these people in power of all these this, countries and shit. This and is, this is just, your real boogeyman right there. That, that's exactly. Just, exactly. That's what you should really be. If you're going to be afraid of something, be afraid of that. Because that's scary shit. Yeah. You know, these, these psychopaths are, in, you know, it's scary. I mean, if you, you know. I try. I don't dwell on that. I just say fuck it. I I try not to be a victim of fear. I try not to live in fear. I I can't I can't handle that. I I would not be able to be okay with that. No. I say fuck fear. You know. Sure. I call it out for what it is. That's why we do this show. That's why I started doing this show so I can vent every week because the shit's so fucking insane. You know. Yeah. So it's like yeah. This is my coping mechanism before this show, <laughs> you know. Basically, right. That's why we started doing this show, and it's called, you know, we survived another week. I say that oh. often, when, uh, you know. Hey, hey, you remember there was a couple few weeks ago? I think we were talking about uh, Wisconsin and the drunk. That was the, like most drunk places of all. Yes. Yes. Apparently not true. Really. According to this, from the San Diego Union Tribune, anyway, okay. San Diego is number one on the list of the booziest cities in the United States. Wow. San Diego. Bunch of drunk bastards it down there. Really? <laughs> drunk bastards. Wow. Well, right. a lot, there's not even a, a Wisconsin city in the list. Really? Oh, okay. Well, that's a, that's a West Coast survey, obviously. Well, they do have San Diego, Seattle, and San Francisco, but they also have Boston, Anchorage, Denver. Oh, uh, really? Well, those are major cities, then. Minneapolis, St. Paul, Baltimore, yeah. St. Louis, and D.C. That's all major cities like that. That's just like a goal, like a given. Yeah, I don't believe that study at all. Oh, well, you, you never lived in San Diego. Um. <laughs> no, I but I live in Wisconsin, dude, which just makes the top ten for booziest all, all the time. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of drunk bastards down there in San there Diego. Is, there's a lot of drunk bastards in Wisconsin. Trust me. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, they're all over the place. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was apparently. I thought it was kind of humorous. That is funny. Yeah, says so the average San Diego consumer spent an average of eleven hundred and twelve dollars last year on alcohol. Wow. That, that's uh, I, I mean that I is, see I, I I guarantee you that's a West Coast study that they didn't compete with was well with Wisconsin. It says the uh, the study assembled by Delphi Behavioral Health Group. Okay. It, does, it doesn't mention where Delphi is. Right. Um, but uh, anyway, all the yeah, information. It could be on the list. I'm not downplaying any major city. Any major city could be the booziest city. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. But number one, number one with a shot, yeah. with a shot glass. 
Okay. <laughs> I've never run with a shotgun. Okay, well that makes sense. That's everybody then. <laughs> We're all the booziest fuckers in the, on the planet. Oh, God. And the, but don't mix big pharma with alcohol. That's deadly. Yeah. In fact, don't do big pharma at all. Right, stay away from that crap. Yeah, fucking fuck that shit. That'll kill you. Let's do our last set here. Okay, uh, let's do that. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll come back after after this and, and say what we got to say. Yeah, we will. Whatever that is. Whatever it is. <laughs> uh, this is Ozzy. Black Betty, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love Stoner Train. Uh, what a great band. Uh, anyway, that was Stoner Train with their version of Black Betty. Before that, The Pretty Reckless doing My Medicine. Uh, previous to that was Electric Six Danger High Voltage. Uh, thanks to Circle for that. And we kicked it off there with Ozzy Osbourne and Let Me Hear You Scream. Oh, man. So the World Series is going on right now, you know? Yeah. And they're in the fourth, 14th inning. 14th inning. That's almost two games, and right? The record is 14 innings, and it was set in the Babe Ruth era. Like okay. over 100 years ago. Wow. So this is huge. Like, they're in the 14th inning, tied up 2-2. Two two. Uh-huh. And um, it's a crazy game. This is when I love baseball, when it's in the playoffs and every play matters. It's so, like, intense. And I know it's baseball and it's a game and it's a distraction, but, you know, it's a good game and it gets really intense at times. And when you're talking about the World Series, meaning the World Series champion of the world for that year, you know, it's a huge thing. And it's really cool that they, it's in the 14th inning now. And that's okay. the record. All right. So if it goes longer than that, it's going to set a record All for right. the longest game played in a World Series. Terrific. Yeah. Well, I can tell you're being sarcastic. <laughs> you know. I Whatever. Know, baseball has been very good to me. Baseball <laughs> has been very, very good to me. Like, I used to watch Pluto Sarger T. I just watch Saturday Night Live. I uh, I know how to do the baseball that hasn't been very right. <laughs> you know, I, that probably sounds terrible. If anyone's out in L.A. listening to that, just totally disregard that. Like, just wipe that from your memory. Like, there you go. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, you know. boy. Yeah, anyway. But maybe uh, Dan Aykroyd's out there listening. Or Guido himself. Yeah, Father Guido. I think he's dead. No. I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure he died. Oh, yeah, I think... Well, Dan Eichner is still alive. Yeah, but not the the guy that played Guido. No, no, he doesn't. He died, I remember. You know. yeah. That sucks. Anyway, right, folks, uh, t tomorrow, tomorrow you got the dark table at noon with Flash and possibly Rob Works. I don't know. Grammy joined him last week, so some, somebody may join Flash that would tomorrow. Be cool. Yeah, so... Uh, and then on Sunday, I'll be on at noon Eastern with uh, the Blues, and we'll play the trivia here. In the chat room, Hal Anthony will follow that at 3 p.m. Eastern with Behind the Woodshed opening up the big old can right. of whoop ass. And then on uh, the, the Tuesday is the uh, what the hell is it called? A perfect in a in a perfect world. In a perfect world, quote with, unquote. With Flash and Rob Works, we'll join him this week. So that's going to be cool to hear and, and on that one. And that's at 1 p.m. Eastern on uh, Tuesday. Then Wednesday and Friday, of course, Grammy at her regular time, 7 p.m. Eastern. We'll be back next Friday with the first we show. We shall return. With the, with the first show of November. And also, by the way, uh, tonight we've used the Wire application, yes. Wire, Wire.com. So if anybody wants to uh, install and load the Wire on their machine. I really like it. It's better than Skype. I can tell it's lighter than Skype because Skype would always mess up with my listening abilities to the show while he's playing the music. Right. With this one tonight, it was totally smooth. I could hear it. It sounded great. And and you can yeah. you can uh, locate me on Wire using at the at the at sign Grimnair. 
And I'm at Moose Girl, of course. Who else would I be? Uh, uh, nobody else? That's you? Exactly. Who else would I fucking be? <laughs> okay. All right. You happy guys ha have a kick-ass weekend. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. Peace. Peace.